Hey guys, so here are some more videos from when I got to air crew school and it includes my first Christmas and a little bit about air crew school and then it also includes my uh, water egress training. There will be more videos, but you guys have said, why aren't they longer? Because these are my TikToks. So I kind of bundled them. You're getting a bundle. So after I left boot camp, I was able to take a month of leave and I went home, but it wasn't going to overlap into Christmas. So I actually checked into my first duty station three days before Christmas. And of course we had celebrated Christmas while I was home, but it's just not the same. So it's going to be my first Christmas away. And um, so I checked in and I went to air crew school in Pensacola and it was a ghost town. Everybody was like basically on leave for Christmas. Nothing was happening. Nobody was there. So I was in my room all by myself. And um, on uh, Christmas Eve, this guy knocks on my door and he's he was another student. And he was like, hey, um, I'm from Mobile, Alabama, which is like very close. And my family, you know, asked me to invite everybody to come and um, spend Christmas with us. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. So I went and there was like seven or eight of us. And, you know, we, we drove out there. It was very close to, to Pensacola. And when we got there, his family was so amazing. They were the warmest and nicest people. Um, gave everybody hugs and and it was just wonderful. And she made like a huge dinner, his mom. And um, on Christmas morning, I remember the food was insane, okay? I'm, my mom... I, my mom was a single mom and I was the only child. We did not have spread like that. It was amazing. I'm talking er, anything you can think of. I got to try my first grit, which was not, I wasn't a fan. I thought it was going to be cream of wheat. I had never had grits. But anyways, it was fun. It was amazing. And then we all got to call our families on Christmas morning. And I remember trying to get off the phone really quick so that um, I didn't want to run up her bill. And she's like, no, sweetheart, you talk to your family. And it was so nice. And then she had given everybody a gift. And I'll never forget it. She gave me a um, address book that I used for years. Because remember, we didn't have cell phones. So I used that address book for years. It was so thoughtful and so sweet. And then I remember we went outside and they gave us all this big handful of bottle rockets and a pipe. And there was like a fort in the backyard. And basically, we stuck the bottle rockets in the pipe and we literally just put sunglasses on. That was our um, safety measures for the day. We just ran at each other with bottle rockets. It was the most fun I'd ever had. So that was my very first Christmas in the military. And it was very special. I'll never forget it. <laughs> So when class started up again at air crew school, because remember I got there uh, right before Christmas. So once it started back up, they put us in our class and our, I think our team had like 20 people and um, they had us come up with a class chant. Oh my dog. Um, they had us come up with a class chant and this was in, oh gosh. So this was January, 1991. And do you know that I still remember my class chant? I do. Um, so that's kind of, I don't know, just kind of funny that the things that you remember, but yet I, I can't even remember what day it is half the time. But I remember that after all these years. But um, yeah, we, so our class had, um, we had a couple Marines and we had a couple guys from um, the Coast Guard and then of course Navy. And I remember when I met our instructor, Petty Officer Tanner and... Um, he was such a good mentor. He was amazing. There's going to be a lot of stories about him because he was just phenomenal. And he, I actually got to meet him again later on in my Navy career. I got to see him again and he remembered me, which was kind of cool. But, um, cause I really looked up to him. He was a ginger. So he was a Weasley cause anyone gingers a Weasley if you watch Harry Potter anyway, but he was amazing. And, um, but the thing I remember about air crew school is no matter where we were going, 
we ran there. We were like Forrest Gump, okay? We were running, okay? So if we had to go to the pool, we ran in formation to the pool. If we had to run the obstacle course, we'd run to the obstacle course. We could run the obstacle course. But um, we ran in formation, and, um, of course, they were calling cadence. Now, Marines don't come at me. I know Navy cadence is not like Marine Corps cadence. But we did the whole, like, C-130 rolling down the strip, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it was, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that part. And, um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of pictures and stuff like that of all the different activities that we did, the different trainings, because there is some really interesting training. And, uh, if you watch, I think officer and a gentleman had a lot of it. It's really interesting stuff. It's really interesting stuff. So I'm going to be sharing pictures and whatever I can find of that. And, uh, but yeah, air crew school was amazing. It was one of my favorite times that I had while I was in the Navy. And it was only, I think it was two months, three months, two months, I think. But yeah, it was exciting and it was fun. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the Hilo Dunker. It's the underwater egress training. And what it is, it's a program that teaches you, tries to teach you how to get the hell out of the airplane if you go in the water. If you survive impact, it's to help you get the hell out. Now, the one I went through is geared toward helicopters. I didn't fly in helicopters, but it was still great training. And so basically what it looks like, and I'll be showing a video in a minute, but it, it looks like a tin can held up above a pool and it has seats and it's situated like a helicopter. There's two seats in the front, it's supposed to be the pilot and co-pilot and then back seats, seats on one side, seats on another, and you get strapped in. So we're trained that as soon as there's impact, as soon as you hit, you grab a reference point. Now, depending on what seat you're in is which reference point you're gonna be grabbing. So if you're near a window, it'll be, one hand will be on that window seal, the other one will be on your seat. And the reason for that is, is as soon as you hit, that thing starts to flip upside down, okay? So as it's flipping, you see the water coming at you like this, right? And the first time I did it, I was facing this way and the water was coming up this way. So we were turning this way. So you see it coming and coming and coming. And you have to take that breath and you have your reference points and you cannot undo your buckle until you're completely upside down. Reason being, I found out why, because I, I released the first time early, is as it's rolling, if you let go early, you'll start rolling and then you lose your reference to where you're at. Now I was still able to get the hell out because that happened on my first try and your first try is uh, you go out your main window, okay? And you don't have goggles on, you got your main window. Now remember, we're wearing full flight gear. So you're heavy, you're wearing boots, you're wearing a flight suit and all that jazz. And so of course I panicked, I released too early and tumbled, but I was able to get out, okay? The next time you go, you do the same thing, but you're wearing goggles that are blackened, okay? You can't see anything. But it's still not super hard because you're right near the window or the door or whatever. But um, it's still scary because you're completely blacked out. You cannot see, okay? The next time you go, you don't have goggles on, but everyone has to go out the main cabin door. Now. I didn't have it too bad. I was in um, I was in the middle seat on uh, on the side where the cabin door was. I was able to get out. It wasn't hard, but follow for the next part because it gets good. So the last time you go, you have to wear the blackened goggles and you, everyone has to get out the main cabin door. And I did not luck out on this one. I was in the back seat all the way in the back across from the main cabin door, which meant I had to go down my aisle of seats and then across to the main cabin door. I was going to be the last person out. So I'm being kicked in the face and in the shoulder. And uh, remember, we're wearing flight gear. We do not have oxygen. And so I lose my breath. Um, the Navy divers are right there. They had to come get me, pull me out. 
Um, so yeah, that happened. But the next time I went, um, I got a little bit luckier. I was in the middle seat across from the uh, main cabin door and it was a lot easier to get out and I was able to pass that training. Okay, so who wants to see it? So that's it. That's the Hilo Dunker. Do you think you could do it? And if you've ever done it, let me know. How'd you do?